Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, did you hear that Old McDonald's Farm has been overtaken by artificial intelligence? AI? AI. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 10 historical board games that are not war games. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, these are my top 10 historical non-war games. Now, let me be very clear what I'm talking about here. Um, I love war games. I love war games, but I also love games that tackle historical themes that are not war games. Now, some of these titles, as you will see, deal with war in some manner. There, there's maybe little wars in them, or, or, or war has something to do with them. But what I mean is they're not war games in that they are not dudes on a map. They're not combat. We're not pushing counters. We're not, we don't have minis. We're not doing combat stuff, okay? That's how I'm defining a war game for the purposes of this list. Every game on this list is, um, like I say, deals with some heavily thematic people or events. Um, and then, as I say, there may be some war involved in it, but it is not a, a combat game, you know, a, an actual hex encounter or risk or, or, or access and allies or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. First of all, I got some uh, honorable mentions. First of all, Banish the Snakes. I just played this recently. Banish the Snakes from GMT Games. This is a game of St. Patrick going to Ireland in the Dark Ages, and he is attempting to convert people to Christianity. Uh, very fun and interesting game, really about die rolls and, and, and adjusting DRMs, but, but really had a lot of fun with it. Also from GMT Games, Charioteer. This is a great game about the chariot, uh, chariot races in ancient Rome. Um, probably one of the least thematic in the sense that it really gets into the weeds of the history here, but nevertheless, set in ancient Rome, um, and I really do enjoy it. You're, you're playing cards to move your, your chariots around the track, and a lot of fun. And then finally, Resist from uh, Salt and Pepper, and this game is, it takes place during the years after World War II, where you've got this resistance to Franco going on, but again, it's not a war game. It's more of kind of this deck builder where you're going on missions, and you're assigning strength points to different cards and missions to defeat them. Uh, so that one is really good as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the list now. Number 10. Uh, this is this is a game I've had for a long time. I actually haven't played it in a while, but it's great fun. This is Downfall of Pompeii. In Downfall of Pompeii, this was from Mayfair Games back in the day. Downfall of Pompeii is a game about um, Mount Vesuvius erupting over, erupting over Pompeii. And again, a little abstract, but you are placing, you're populating the board in the first half of the game. You're putting kind of your people out on the board, your colored people. And then after a while, you draw a card and it triggers the eruption. And then you're trying to get all your people out. And you're putting down lava tiles. You're trying to get your other, other people's. And you're trying to get your own people out of the city. Great fun. Really enjoyed Downfall of Pompeii. Um, good general historical overview. Not a great in-the-weeds history game. But it gives you a real good flavor of, of um, the period. And does a great job. It's just tremendous fun. So that is Downfall of Pompeii. That was from Mayfair Games. That was my number 10. My number nine is is one of arguably probably the the most serious game on this list, and what I mean by serious is it tackles a pretty pretty tough subject, and it's something of course that we um, certainly for someone like me in history education deals with a lot, um, and it's an important history, and it's one that it's it's really honored here in this game I think, and it does a very good job. But this is my number nine is Freedom the Underground Railroad from Academy Games. Now this is a game where essentially um, there are slaves on plantations that you are trying to guide to the north into to freedom in Canada. And you've got a system where you have slave catchers that are moving around that are trying to intercept the slaves and, and return them to the plantations. And you as the player, of course, obviously are doing everything you can to get them through there. But what, what what's cool about this game, too, is there's all these great cards. They're all about the abolition movement and all about the Underground Railroad. And there's, there's, there's some text there. And some, it, it, this is a game you play that educates you. And that's one of the things that I really liked a lot about Downfall of, Pon or, uh, of uh, Freedom of the Underground Railroad is that it does that. It absolutely gives you a, a greater appreciation, even if on a very small scale, for a very complex subject. Uh, great, uh, important history to learn, and a very fun game in its own right. So this is uh, number nine, that is Freedom of the Underground Railroad. That's from Academy Games. My number eight is another game I just played fairly recently. Um, this is Watergate from Capstone Games. Watergate, Watergate is a great two-player game where one of you is Richard Nixon, one of you is an editor. You're going back and forth um, trying to get evidence. And, and the 
the editor is trying to use the evidence to build a trail between Nixon and two witnesses, whereas Nixon is trying to obscure the trail and, and put the um, evidence kind of face down so that it kind of blocks pathways there. Really fun and interesting game. Great card play um, and just overall very tense. A very fun game. That is Watergate. That is my number eight, and that is from Capstone Games. My number seven is a game I played, um, I think it came out just last year. And I played it, played it several times, and really have enjoyed it. Great area control game, but again, a game that really gets, evokes the history quite well. And this is Votes for Women from uh, Fort Circle Games. In Votes for Women, essentially, it does a great job of showing the historical development of the women's rights movement in the United States from about the middle, I think the Seneca Falls Convention, about 1848, up until about um, you know the time they actually gained suffrage in the early 20th century. And it's really good. It's it's a great area control game, as I say. And what I like about it is, of course, you got cards too. They got the cards that are giving you a lot of great text and, and flavor text and letting you know about what was going on. But what I really like is you're trying to gain all of the points and all you're trying to gain control of all of these these areas on the board. You're doing it with cubes. But what's really cool is at one point the um, Suffragette player may, or may not, gain congressional support for the amendment. Now, once that happens, every state that has four cubes of a specific color either votes yay or nay. And then you go through and you essentially do these kind of roll-offs for each state, see how they're going to vote. But you can mitigate that. You can change this. It's not just the die rolls. Really good, really fun game, really smart and, and intelligent game, and, and I, like I said, just fun. I really enjoyed it. That is number seven. That is Votes for Women. That is from Fo Fort Circle Games. My number six game, again, this is one that kind of is on the precipice of being a war game, but it's not really a war game. It's more of a diplomatic game. And this is uh, Origins of World War II. This was from Avalon Hill. It's probably the oldest game on this list. This was, I think, 71, 73, sometime. It's older than I am. And this game is all about gaining influence in different countries. You know, you're a country, and you're trying to gain different countries and in, in influence in different countries in Europe. Like the British, if they, if they can if they can get enough influence out there, they can actually prevent World War II from happening. You know, the Germans, uh, they can put themselves in a more advantageous for the start of World War II. But it's really a fun game all about trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, how, how much influence is it going to take to, to get things to move my way? And I'm putting flags in, my, in, in, in enemy countries or, 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 you know, other players' countries, and they don't want my flags there, but they want to put their flags where I am. It's, it's a great game. Um, I actually, again, haven't played this one in a long time. I would love to play this one again. i got to get it to the table. This is Origins of World War II. That is my number six. That is from Avalon Hill. My number five is a game that um, it kind of reminds me. When I played Boats for Women, it really reminded me of this game a lot. And I like both of these games. I think I might like this one a hair more. But this is 1960, The Making of a President from GMT Games. Originally, I think it was Z-Man. But the version I have, and the only version I played is the GMT Games. Uh, GMT games. And this is a great game about the 1960 presidential election between Richard Nixon and uh, John F. Kennedy. And again, you're going around the board, you're trying to put your cubes there to gain support in the different states. At the same time, you know, there's a debate, you have to debate on certain issues and, and gain support that way. <clears throat> All told, it's just a great game about presidential politics. And I'll tell you, you really learn a lot about the Electoral College in this game. And what states you have to go for, what states maybe you can afford to neglect. Um, because you've only got finite resources and finite time, what are you going to do? And it's one of those games that you feel like you're not doing very well, and you're thinking the other guy's got all these advantages. And then when you kind of look at it from their point of view, it's like, no, they think they're, they're losing and, and you've got the advantages. Great game, playing cards, uh, really enjoy it. 1960, Making of a President, that is from uh, GMT Games. It's uh, uh, Jason Matthews' design, and that is my number five. My number four is a game that is in the same family with Making of a President, and this is 1989 Dawn of Freedom. 1989 Dawn of Freedom is a game that takes place during the last year of um, really the Cold War, um, where you are um, essentially one of you plays the Democrat and one of you is the Communists. And what that means is you're know, the forces of freedom in Eastern Europe battling the forces of um, communism, these communist regimes. And you're, you're, go, you're going through and you're playing cards to gain area control in certain spaces, but then you also have these scoring sessions where, of course, you're kind of 
playing cards that represent, the, you know, the, the, the proletariat or the, the party bureaucracy or students or media or intellectuals. You're playing all these different cards and I play a card, you got to match my card. And, and it's great and I really enjoy it. It's a great uh, game of area control. And really important history as well. Some great cards that tell you some of the great history. That is 1989, Dawn of Freedom. That is from GMT Games. That's also a Jason Matthews design. My number three is a game that came out here, I think, in 2020. In fact, I think it was my game of the year for 2020. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, great history. And again, a lot of fun. This is uh, Versailles 1919. In Versailles 1919, of course, you play the belligerents after the war. And you're trying to create the peace and you have to negotiate for the peace and you're, there's different kind of issues that come down and you're trying to get it you're trying to get it through kind of area control manipulation and once you get it you, those are victory points but the problem is you're gonna have these uprisings that occur in certain parts of the world that potentially could make your card be back up for grabs and other people can steal it from you really tremendous fun um great theme great history here and like i say just very engaging very very fun so that is versailles 1919 that is gmt games and that is my number three my number two is a game and this is kind of one of those games that was kind of skirting again is it a war game and fundamentally it's not because it's not a combat game but it does take place during a war this is black orchestra from starling games and Black Orchestra is essentially a game where you are the resistance to Hitler. Now, again, the war factors into the game in, in the sense that the, the, the borders of Germany expand and there's different places you can go to. But at the same time, as I say, it's not about the war. It's not about fighting the war. It's about gathering resources and trying to be in a situation where it's advantageous for you to try to take a shot at Hitler. In the meantime, the Gestapo's doing crackdowns. You might have contraband that could tie you to one of these plots and could throw you into a concentration camp. Uh, very, very good stuff here. I really like the way, um, I think it's Phil DuPerry did this, and I really like the way he kind of looked at the Nazi regime and what they were doing and, 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 and was able to turn this into a really fun, tense, playable, cooperative game of trying to take down Hitler. A lot of people think it's, it's somewhat anticlimactic. I, I think, well, it may be, but it's a game about the journey. It's about getting there. Um, so I really enjoy Black Orchestra quite a bit. Every time I played it, I have had a ball. It is incredibly tense, and it's a lot of fun. So that is my number two. That is Black Orchestra. Again, I believe that's from Starling Games. Well, my last game should probably be no surprise to anyone, given some of these, these other games I put out there. And again, this is one that some people would consider a war game. I don't. I consider it a diplomatic game. And this is Twilight Struggle from GMT Games. Twilight Str Struggle remains my favorite non-war historical game because it does such a good job with the history. It does such a good job of educating people on exactly what happened, what the stakes were. And yes, there are little wars that take place inside it, but again, it's not like you're it's not like you're doing a combat dudes on a map thing here. So, but it's but it's fun. It's it's it covers the entirety of the Cold War. You're playing through the the early, the middle, and the late Cold War, you know, and 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 it's great. I could have probably included the new one, the 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 Struggle in the Horn of Africa here. Um Maybe next time. But I really enjoy the original. It's a long game. It's probably about a three-hour game. But it's just tremendously fun. I love Twilight Struggle so much. So um, if you haven't played Twilight Struggle, you really need to. To me, it's like one of those games everybody needs to play at least once. Um, it's I've never played a game. Every time I talk about Twilight Struggle, I always say this because it's so true. I have never played a game in my life that... Make, forces the player to make the best of bad decisions because every hand you're going to have some bad decisions and you got to make the best out of it and the only comfort you have is knowing that your opponent is in the same boat they've got to make the best of bad decisions as well twilight struggle is absolutely amazing that is my number one that is from gmt games well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please uh, let us know what you think. Do you like these games? What are your favorite non-war historical games? I'd be very interested to know what you have to say. I'm always looking for these these kinds of games. I think uh, the, the, there's so few that are really, really good that, that, that do these sorts of things that are not war games, as I say. Um, go ahead, let me know what you think. I, I'd love to hear what else you've got out there. And what do you think of my selections as well? 
please leave a comment here on YouTube, Board Game Geek, um, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter. We really appreciate that. And please check out my other channel, Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. I'm currently uploading my World War II lectures on that channel right now. And if you really uh, do enjoy the channel, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you uh, humbly to go ahead and leave a tip. Uh, hit the super thanks button here on the on the channel. We really would appreciate that as well. You know, uh, I got to tell you, I'm a little bummed because my Android girlfriend recently broke up with me. I just didn't know how to turn her on. <laughs>